To get the dealer's cost, the list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates, click on the Car Cost Canada tab at any time during the video. Well, here it is, the 2019 Ford Ranger back in the Canadian marketplace after a seven year absence. What are we dealing with here? Well, this is a 75, 80% scale model of an F-150. Certainly looks that way on the outside. And as you'll see in a couple of minutes, that has carried to the interior as well. Now, I actually think this is a reasonable alternative for someone who would otherwise be looking at a midsize SUV. Why? Well, when you get the extended cab, there's not plentiful room in the back, but it's reasonable enough, especially for kids. And you also get all the utility and capability of a truck and the five foot bed, which trust me, you'll find all kinds of creative ways of using as I have over the past week with the Ranger. Also importantly, under the hood, unique for the category, a 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, which as you'll see, lots of power, lots of capacity, and importantly, fuel economy. Let's jump right into the good stuff. Powering this Ranger is the only engine option available. It's a 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder engine that's turbocharged with 270 horsepower, 310 pounds feet of torque. And what's interesting is it's the only engine option available and that's kind of a differentiator in this segment. If you look at the Canyon or the Tacoma, typically you get into this segment with a base model that comes with a naturally aspirated inline four and then you gotta pay extra for a naturally aspirated V6. But here, this is all you get. This is a great engine. It's available in a couple of different Ford products and Lincoln vehicles as well. And with 310 pounds feet of torque, this thing can tow up to 7,500 pounds. This little truck, 3,400 kilograms, if you prefer your info in metric. It's got a steel bed back there that can uh, carry a, a payload of uh, just around 1,800 pounds as well. So light and medium duty towing and hauling dirt and gravel and whatever else you wanna put back there absolutely not a problem. Now, a big advantage outside of drivability with that low down torque that comes with this 2.3 liter EcoBoost is fuel economy. On the highway, this thing's awesome. You can easily get between 10 and 11 liters per 100K. Around the city, Ford claims around 11 liters per 100 kilometers. I'm nowhere near that. I've been averaging sort of between 14 and 15, but grain of salt. I'm in the downtown Toronto torture chamber of uh, congested streets and really gnarly traffic. So I'm, I'm probably pushing those um, numbers up a little bit, but overall on average, this gets fuel economy that's more or less on par with a V6 powered sort of mid-sized SUV. Now keeping to the philosophy of a limited pared down menu, there's only one transmission option. No manual transmission available in North America. It's just Ford's 10 speed, which is finding its way into an increasing number of vehicles in their range. And I think it's the same unit that's in the F-150 uh, and the Expedition, for example, but for whatever reason in this application, something's going on here. It uh, is a little bit herky-jerky and I've been able to trip it up just a bit by playing with the throttle, whereas I, I, it was flawless in those other applications. Uh, perhaps it's got something to do with being a brand new vehicle, only 785 kilometers on the odometer here. Maybe there's some bedding in, I don't know, but here it just seems to be uh, not quite perfect. So I'm just getting off the highway here. I'm gonna pull into a parking lot. We'll take a look at the outside of this thing and then take a little tour around the inside. But first I wanna see if I can capture something. All week long, I've been hearing this annoying clicking sound that's driving me absolutely mental. And it's when the auto stop start function engages. So I'm coming up to a stoplight here. The engine's gonna turn off. And then as soon as I let go of the brake, the engine's gonna turn back on again, except it goes click, click, like the sound of a solenoid or something turning on. Okay, ready? Okay, the engine's off. Wait for it, and... What is that? It's been driving me absolutely nuts. It's coming from down here in sort of the glove box area. And as I said, it sounds like a switch or some solenoid or something making a click, click sound. And I hope the camera can catch that because it's just completely unique and weird and has really been annoying me, really. Well, Ford says this is an all new truck, but that's not really the truth. It's actually been around since about 2011, just not sold in North America. It's been in Asia, it's been in Europe, been in South America, but it's mostly new for the Canadian marketplace. 
What do you think of the way this thing looks? I actually quite like it. It's got the FX4 off-road package, which gives you a couple of nice features. Uh, skid plates underneath the vehicle to protect everything if you do decide to go off-road. Uh, we also get different uh, struts up front, different suspension tuning again, because this claims to be a bit of an off-roading truck. We also get these nubbier tires, which are gonna be better in mud and sand. And this being the Lariat edition, we get these pretty sweet 17 inch black wheels. I kind of like the way those look. So if we're coming around the front, again, this is very much an F-Series pickup truck, but scaled down to about 80%. It's sleek. I actually really like the way that it looks and I think it works well with the Ford family of uh, truck styling. The front end sort of pinches together here. The benefit of that is from behind the steering wheel, it really falls down to the asphalt, which gives you great visibility, much more so than your standard uh, full-size pickup truck. Coming around the front again, standard LED headlamps. They look really cool, I love these. And you'll notice the black lower bumper area, that's steel. Now Ford's been talking about that a lot. If I'm being honest, it seems mostly like a design feature to me. Sure, you could push brush out of the way, but if I've missed the obvious benefit to that, let me know in the comments. Now, the only thing I wanna talk about here are the running boards. This is an option equipped from the factory. And for me, it doesn't really work. I don't think you need them. I'm six foot two inches tall. So uh, caveat being that I'm slightly taller than average, but this is actually not a really big vehicle. You can see here, I'd rather just jump in, jump out without them, rather than having to jump over these things, which has put a bit of mud on the back of my jeans this week. Coming around the back, very simple tailgate. You'll notice no damping here. No fancy ladder and arm hold system like you'll find with the F-150 and some of the new Ram and, and GM products. This is a basic bed. It's a, a five foot bed when you go for the extended cab configuration. If you go for the standard cab, you, you get a six foot bed, so an extra foot of cargo capacity. You can fit a ton of stuff in this five foot bed. There's no power back here, which is a bit of a bummer, but there is an optional spray and bed liner installed directly from the factory. We also get a light up on the cab so you can load. and unload at night via a switch uh, from the driver's compartment. So basic truck, really in keeping with the tradition and the purpose of the Ranger, it's a step below the F-150, it's, it's a workhorse. Again, it'll give you everything you need, nothing you don't, and I think they've done a pretty good job there. All right, so we're here in the back of the Ranger and I'm starting here to illustrate a point to you. And that is, you can get your Ranger sort of one of two ways. And the first is the standard length cab, which is really not suitable for transporting uh, real live humans in the back, maybe small kids uh, for short periods at a time. But if you want usable space back here, go for the extended cab and you'll be pleasantly surprised. So I'm six foot two inches tall and it's all legs. This is my driver's position. And yeah, is it limousine-esque? Absolutely not, but I've got more than enough room for my boots to fit underneath my seat. Um, and I've got a handy cutaway in the back of the seat that allows my knees to fit in here. And sure, this is again, not the most comfortable in the world. The seat position, the uh, backrest rather, is fixed. You can't move that. But I'm surprised. I mean, this has as much space as you'd find in some uh, small and mid-size SUVs. And if you're more average height, you're gonna, this seat's gonna be uh, slid up a little bit farther anyways. Certainly no problem whatsoever for kids for um, you know, reasonable distances. In terms of creature comforts, you've got two powered USB outlets. That's always a great thing. You've got a 110 household outlet that I'm gonna use to charge my camera batteries momentarily. And yeah, as is tradition, we've got a fold down armrest with some nice padding and cup holders. Now, something else we have, I'm just gonna quickly jump out to show you this. May be a benefit or a disadvantage as you see it. This entire seat will fold flat as you can see or at least partially flat. Now this could allow you to have just a little bit more creativity with space in terms of storing things back here, but it does expose some of the electronics back here. So I don't know if you'd wanna get any moisture or water. I can't see throwing you know, a snowboard back here, for example, and having it rest against, I don't know if this is a part of the B&O audio system or what, but there's some wires there. So you'd probably wanna avoid that. And if you want, you can pull this strap down here and the seat bottom will fold up. Again, this does reveal some cubbies, this sort of asymmetrical size cubbies down here for some secret storage. But again, it's not, a, it's not a flat space. You do have a transmission tunnel here, but I could see you at least partially having a little more flexibility to store large items here. All right, getting into the Ranger and you're struck by how similar this is to a lot of other things in the Ford family of vehicles, namely the F-150, but this is shrunken down. In fact, this feels 
a lot smaller than an F-150 once you get on the inside. More like you're driving a, a mid-size SUV, which I think a lot of people are gonna like. The visibility out is great. Uh, the hood sort of plunges in front of you. This is a lot easier to drive around parking garages and, and tight parking lots. If you live in a city like I do, um, it's a breeze, whereas the full-size F-150 and up can be uh, kind of burdensome at times, depending on how traffic is flowing. These seats uh, are partially electrically adjustable. And what I mean is you've got electric lumbar, you've got electric fore and aft, but manual seat back adjustment. So to me, it wouldn't be that much of a, a, of a hassle for them to throw in two more points of adjustment. But uh, nonetheless, that's what we've got here in this Ranger. Now, another thing is regardless of the comfort, and I think these are quite comfortable, they call this leather in the pricing sheet. And uh, I don't know about that. I'm a little suspicious of that claim. This looks more like a vinyl, certainly doesn't uh, smell or really feel like leather. I'm not entirely sure I'd, I'd pay for the upgrade over the standard cloth seats that the base model comes equipped with. Um, they are heated, but that's an option. No available heated steering wheel, which is a bummer because in the Canadian marketplace, uh, that can be a godsend, especially if you park your vehicle outside overnight. Now, what else is optional in this interior? The eight inch sink screen is an option that doesn't come standard, but you're gonna probably wanna upgrade into that if this is something you're gonna drive every day. Sync 3, we've talked a lot about it in other vehicles before. You see it all across the Ford range, and of course it's reskinned for Lincoln vehicles as well. Works really well. One of the easier systems to use. Uh, audio, climate, phone, navigation, apps, settings, all touchscreen, no scroll wheel here. Easy to uh, connect to your telephone via Bluetooth, which I like to keep up here in this handy cubby that's on the top of the dashboard. Now, wasted opportunity in my mind, they should have a wireless charging pad there. They don't, but that would be a perfect place. Possibly in the future, uh, they'll add that in. So what do I think of the interior of the Ranger? Well, I'm gonna give it a solid B. Uh, there's some elements that I like, some things that I'm not such a big fan of. The design to me, to my eye, is just okay. I do wish that I had things like uh, the option of a sunroof, maybe just the option of a heads-up display. I wonder why you can't get a heated steering wheel, and I wish that the heated seats were standard. You can get cars that are twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars these days that have that as standard equipment. It just makes sense in the Canadian marketplace. But overall, solid place to be. And I got to recognize and got to remember that a lot of people are buying these trucks to work and not to be near luxury vehicles. Nothing fancy happening here with suspension. The Ranger has a very traditional setup, no dynamic dampers, no air suspension, anything like that. It's just front independent with struts. Rear, we've got a strong, solid axle uh, going with some heavy duty leaf springs and that's it. But in terms of ride comfort and compliance, it's a bit of a step down when you consider uh, new full-size products from Ram and GM and Ford. And it's mostly in the rear end, if I'm being honest. It's a little chattery over bumps. A little bit of NVH coming through, just through my rear end. The front is fine, it's communicative. You can actually feel a little bit of the imperfections in the road, which uh, in this day and age, I think people actually might like. So overall, it's a comfy package, uh, but you can tell that this thing is tuned uh, to be a truck more for utility. It doesn't have the degree of uh, sophistic sophistication and the degree of refinement you're gonna find in its bigger, more expensive stable mate than the F-150. I said right off the top that I think this is a reasonable substitute for a smaller or medium-sized SUV, and I stand by that, and I want to tell you why. The first thing is the size of this vehicle on the outside is much less intimidating to your average commuter, and it's just a, a much easier vehicle to handle uh, in a city like Toronto. The other reason while we're talking about size is the rear seats. If you go for the extended cab, you can actually fit kids and average sized adults back here for short and medium distances, no problem. Uh, just as much space back there as you'd find in a compact SUV, a small SUV, except this comes with the benefit of a truck bed. Why do people move from cars to SUVs? Usually it's because they've added kids or they need more space, or like us, you got a dog and you want to throw it in the back there. Nothing, and I'm telling you, nothing beats having a truck bed. I love getting trucks. Whenever I have them, I'm magically coming up with all kinds of uh, things I suddenly need to do. I'm taking garbage to the dump. I'll put a clip up now. This week, I made a couple trips out to our warehouse. I filled this thing up with 100 beer kegs. And when you take a look at this Ranger with a small displacement turbo four, you get tons of usable power. 
great fuel economy, and it runs on 87 octane, regular fuel. Often, when you've got a turbocharged engine, you're putting premium into it. So this is just ease of use and comfort. It's gonna save you money at the gas pumps every year for a couple of reasons, and the size is much more manageable. Why not get one of these things over an SUV? Fancy yourself a Ford Ranger while you're looking at about $31,000 in the Canadian marketplace. And keep in mind, that's gonna give you more power and more torque than any of the competition for the same money. Now, if you wanna step into something a little bit bigger, the extended cab with a couple of nice creature comforts and features on the inside, it's more like $42,000. And finally, this truck as it sits here today, $52,000, but it's got a $3,000 tech pack with the audio system enhancements, the radar guided cruise control. This is a Lariat model as well. Nicer seats on the inside, the 17 inch wheels, and of course the FX4 off-road package with the skid plates and the bigger tires and uh, everything you need to take this truck off into the dirt. Now, things that I like about this vehicle, great torquey engine, overall design on the outside, I think is a, is a total winner. And this thing drives down the road pretty nicely with great fuel economy on the highway. Things I don't like, the fuel economy in the city, not nearly as good as advertised. Overall, there's a couple of weird things. The transmission, I tripped up unexpectedly, and there's that clicking sound, that annoying clicking sound when the auto stop start engages and disengages. That drove me nuts this week. So overall, there are some things that tell me it's not quite as refined a package, doesn't have quite the level of sophistication as some of your mid and upper trim F-150s, but for the cash, it's tough to beat. I think this is gonna do quite well in the Canadian marketplace. Very interested to see how this sells at Canadian dealers over the next couple of years. My name is Mike Gurr. Thanks for watching. Car Cost Canada provides the dealer cost, a list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. The link is in the description below.